Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back. This is another Swift race. But wait, before you tune out, um, it will be something a little bit different. So I've sped up the footage so that it'll take up less of your, t less, less of your time, which I know is very, very precious. And uh, I just wanted to kind of do these videos because when I'm on Swift and I'm racing, I realise that a lot of it, is tactical so it's not just like all about raw power and what i thought was if i could just put out some videos sometimes of me racing on swift it might actually give an insight into those of you that race in the real world because i know some of it does actually translate over now you don't have to be a big fan of swift um but it helps if you're a big fan of following racing if you enjoy watching tour de france if you enjoy watching all the bike races um, you know, you'll still get a kick out of this. You'll still enjoy um, the race breakdowns because it's something that I can't actually do when I'm racing kind of properly in real life because there's obviously bans on having a, a video camera on your bike and, and so forth. So this is something that hopefully will be um, insightful to you and will be a common occurrence on my channel uh, with plenty of races coming up in the future. Now. This is the Tour de Zwift, which is uh, a big block of racing. So they've done it in a format so that you can do, say, stage one on Monday, and there's also a repeated stage one on Tuesday. Stage two on Wednesday, stage two on Thursday, so so on and so forth, so that you, you don't really miss out. If you if you can't ride one day, you can ride the next day. Brilliant idea by Zwift. Um, but anyway, uh, I this is stage two, uh, everything bagel. That was the course on uh, on New York circuit. Now I'm obviously in the A category group, <laughs> obviously, but um, I don't feel like it. But it's uh, it's race fast and furious, so it's no different to like you know racing out on the road. There's plenty of attacks early doors, and it's very high pace. So this, for example, I was riding at something like five watts per kilo for like the first uh, seven minutes or so. So we're three and a half in, three and a half minutes in now. Just about to, to go up to the KOM arch, and uh, it's very strung out. There's obviously people very excited, which happens in the real world as well. You know, people get very excited and they just want to go full ball uh, up a climb. Um, like I know, obviously, you get power ups in Zwift, and you can use uh, use it to your advantage and whatnot. I was actually getting put in a little bit of a box. I'm not quite flat out at the minute. Uh, oh, by the way, my heart rate monitor was playing up as well, so don't don't look into that at all. But um, yeah, I was I was going like pretty hard here uh, because I'd done four hours on a road earlier in the morning, um, and I did this this race in the night, so I did a total of five hours riding uh, on this day. So I used this featherweight uh, boost just to help me stay in the group, basically, because I was just getting uh, just getting dropped and. Um, you know, the, these guys that race, and you know, they obviously race, like, competitively when you look at the results and you kind of click through their names and you see that they race on a, on a regular basis and it's actually quite important to them that they race, like, maybe, you know, five times a week, some of these people. So, you know, you're obviously up there with a lot of competitive cyclists, you know. Um, you still can't, still can't take that away from them. So we go over the top of the climb. And just like in the real world, it's, it's actually quite important to keep pressing on. As you'll see there, I press on, and my power doesn't really drop uh, until now, and then I get caught back up. But if I was, if I was in better shape, I could have potentially have kept on uh, kept on the power there. You know, anything up to 5 watts per kilo, and you know, people, especially if they're on a, on a smart trainer. So a smart trainer would obviously change resistance. As you're going downhill, you'd be pedaling as fast as you could in, uh, in 53.11. Um, to stay on top of that smart trainer but of course I've got a classic trainer which I know a few of you have been disgusted at <laughs> because um, well I don't know whether you assume that I'd have a smart trainer or not but I, I just ride a, a Cyclops a real old-fashioned uh, classic trainer with no adjustment whatsoever so I get a bit of advantage going downhill because the, obviously the resistance doesn't change so now we've we've done a big circuit of New York uh, Central Park. It's pretty flat, so it was pretty boring. We stayed together in this group of I think about fifteen or twenty of us. Bearing in mind there's about thirteen, fourteen hundred people in this race, which is mahusive. Um, uh, but like I said, you know it's this kind of circuit. There's two big climbs. Um, as long as you're kind of capable of putting out say six to seven watts per kilo for three or four minutes. 
you're very capable of staying in that front group. And that's kind of the same out on the road as well, like in, in real life. Um, but as you see here, uh, like I'm riding 380, 400 watts, and I'm getting dropped a little bit, which, uh, which like, you know, I put my weight in for 60 kilos on Zwift, which I know it's only one kilo out because at the minute I weigh 61 kilos, but, you know, it really kind of shows how, how strong these people go when they see a climb. And, uh, you know, I, I've got to dig in pretty much, but that's, uh, that's kind of the nature of the race. And I think on Zwift, it's very kind of start and stop. Like you, you hit the car, like this is another drag or goes up to 10% or somebody a drag, but you can see people are absolutely nailing it up there. You can see their numbers on the right side of the screen. Their watts per kilo, uh, goes, you know, to like 10 watts per kilo or something, just that short period of time. But I pace myself to get back on, which isn't necessarily a good thing because we come to the last climb here with, what is it, 10k to go or something, and uh, I get myself into a bit of a knot. Obviously, we're, we're talking now 33 minutes in. We've been going, say, you know, an average of 4.5 watts per kilo for this whole time, which, you know, it's not, it's not um, hanging around by all means, but, you know, I've been riding for four and a half hours today, and it's not. Uh, my legs are not liking what I'm doing, <laughs> so we hit the we hit the climb, which is kind of the opposite way around to to the first climb we hit earlier in the video. And obviously, these guys just go tearing up this first section. Now, this is the problem with me. Like the first first sign of a climb, I immediately try to pace myself. I'm that that's my weakness. Like it always has been. It's just mentally, I think, more than physically. And you can see here. Like, if this was in real time, we'd be going so slow up here, in real speed, I mean, but I'm glad I've sped it up because we are actually moving, we can see a lot more because of it. The group just rides off, and, um, you know, I hazard a guess they do, you know, well, they've been doing well over, I don't know what happened there, the power dropped out, and then, yeah, that was annoying, but, you know, they're pulling away, they're doing like 7 watts per kilo plus, but the climb... In, I think in the, in total length is only like three and a half minutes, so really it's flat out anyway. Uh, but for me, you know, after after four and a half hours and things, it's, I just wasn't capable of like putting out those numbers, or at least not yet. You know what I mean? So we're not quite there. And like I said, if if the videos, if I keep this progression with showing you my racing and stuff, then you'll be able to see maybe in time that I will be able to uh, respond to say attacks like that, or not even an attack, just just being, being able to maintain that kind of um, effort uh, for three and a half minutes. So we've descended and we are cutting to the last bit of the race now because I've obviously lost contact with that front group. I'm with the guy here that I summited that KOM with and then one other guy caught us. There was absolutely no work going on here, like between us, no cohesion, we weren't working together at all. And, uh, you know, you'll find that in a real race situation um, out on the road, particularly when kind of the race is gone and the race is pulled away. You see a lot of that in the elite races in the UK, actually, like nobody wants to ride, which is, I suppose, in certain situations, it's fair enough because um, the race is gone and what have you. But, you know, this is a virtual race, so it doesn't really matter. And at the end of the day, I'm just doing it for training. So just pressing on, just trying to keep the group, uh, the three of us going. Um, but it, it's hard to like, <laughs> it's hard to gauge because when you're on a on a classic trainer, it's hard to gauge like when to push through or when to ease off because there's no real changes in resistance when you're drafting and things. So just trying to do my best and uh, stay in the wheels with these guys. And um, we uh, we make no ground whatsoever on, on that front group. In fact, they just keep, keep riding off, which I suppose a group of 10 is always going to do. Um, you know, in real world situation, like a group of like six to ten is very, very dangerous. You know, if anything, if anything like that size goes up the road in, um, you know, in any race, I think uh, there's a lot of danger there because you know it's not too big and it's not too small. So it's not too big that they're not going to all work together. And it's not too small that like there's not enough numbers there to actually maintain the the really high pace they're doing. So it's a perfect size group. I know this, and with like you know, kind of two, three K to go, it's kind of like, you know, what do we do? Well, in a situation like this, it's probably best just to sit on, especially since there's no cohesion in this group at all. Um, you know, there's no work going on. There's no um, teamwork going on. So 
just to sit in and don't bother pulling. I did try to have a big old pull uh, because I, I knew the group was coming up behind us, which you can probably see they're closing the gap down down the bottom. The names are getting closer with the meters on the board. So, you know, for me, I wanted to kind of drag this group away, but it, but it just wasn't working. So, you know, as far as I was concerned, with 1K to go, 2K to go, you just rest up, save your pennies, try and get your heart rate down, get your breath back, and then you just wait. Um, and I waited and I thought, okay, this, this gap now, they're like within seven, eight seconds of us, this group behind. So we can either go for 10th or 9th or we're going to get caught and then we're going to be like 20th or something. So my, my thought was, and I don't, I don't know Zwift well enough to know the course and know when to attack or whatever like that. But in terms of feel, you can try and gauge how far to go out. So I tried to go out now from like less than a K to go. Obviously, I can't sprint flat out, but because I'm a classic trader, but I tried giving it a go, I didn't get anywhere, and we got swamped. <laughs> and uh, that was pretty much the end of that, uh, and I rolled in 20th uh, overall, but it was like, yeah, 24th or whatever, as to say. But it's pretty interesting, actually, and um, I just, I, I want to do more of these, because it's it's more of like a, it does relate, it's, it's racing, it's tactics, and it's all interesting. So if, you, if you're interested in bike racing, you'll still be interested in this. So I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown of this video. If you did, uh, comment below, give this video a thumbs up, and share it with other people that you know in your community. All right, cheers, guys. Thank you.